Welcome to church this morning. If you want to stand with us, we're excited to just fill this place, this place, this church with the presence of our God, with praises, honoring our King. I don't know about you guys, but it's been, there's been craziness, there's been lots of stuff going on, and I, I love the opportunity to come here each week and just be reminded, have our hearts fixed on what God is doing and who God is. And we're going to sing this song this morning called Good Grace. It says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage. Hold on. Be strong. And remember where your help comes from. That's what we're going to do today, amen? We're going to remind our hearts. We're going to sing these praises to our God. So let's fill this place. Fill your home, if you're watching online, with praises for our awesome and worthy King. People come together. The strangest neighbors, a blood is one. Children of generations, of every nation, of kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where hell comes from.
hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Savior's love through the storm. He is the Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on His unchanging grace. me gale. My anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, the weak made strong, and the Savior's love God is so good, isn't he? I think it's so cool yesterday. I got to um, honor my father for his retirement. We had a retirement party for him. And as we were there and just sharing the things that we had seen in his life year after year of his work, this theme just kept coming out of, of his trust in Jesus. My father seeing Jesus Christ as the cornerstone of all. And as we were thinking about that and thinking about that for today, um, it just hit me like how often we try and define God by ourselves. Say, God, this is how you are in relation to me. When what he has called us to is to say like, man, you are so far outside of me. I just want to understand who you are. And as I understand more who you are, I understand more who I am meant to be, and who I really am. So this song is just an invitation to say, man, I want to understand, God, what you are, who you are, and what you want me to do, and how you want me to respond to you. So would you just join me? Make this your prayer. Open your heart and say, yeah, God, I want to experience more of you. More than all we More than all we dreamed you could be, more than all we left, Jesus, you mean my every need. 
모든 너 위에 모든 너 위에 drink you could be Oh, 
and just thank him. He is more, more than we can ask or imagine. You're undefinable. I think we stop comparing him to ourselves. We stop saying, God, this is how you should be like me. And we start worshiping an infinite God for who he is. That he is worthy of more praise than we could ever fill this place with. That he is worthy of more honor than we could ever give him. So all we can do is just offer him all of ourselves and say, Jesus, would you take this feeble amount? Would you make it enough? Oh, oh then all we ask, we worship. Oh, then all we dream you could be. Oh, then all Jesus, you define everything more than all we ask. Just tell me it's more. You're more than all we dreamed you could be. You're more than all we lack. Jesus, you define everything more than all we ask, more than all we dream you could be, more than all we lack, you are, Jesus, you define everything, more than Jesus, we just come into this place to encounter you, the God of immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Emmanuel here with us. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you for all that you are. 
It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ that we pray and sing and offer ourselves. Amen, church? You may be seated. love these recaps each week that just shows life that's going on around here. The, the first was Destination Dawson. That was our kids meeting at the, the Dawson home, and uh, that was exciting to see everything that was going on there. Uh, the second one was a, a ladies group that got together for Bible study and dessert and a fire and everything, and there was such a great response to that, and a number of people weren't able to come. Ladies, just keep your eyes out. There's going to be another one in September, so just watch for the advertisement concerning that and, and be able to get together. It's so vital that we do that because I, I know this past week, uh, within our network of people, we heard some difficult news uh, about a number of things, and we need to be reminded who our God is. We need to be understanding that. In fact, Pam and I were away with uh, our family this past week for a few days, and at one point, uh, I found myself on a very hot day in this position. I was laying in a stream. It was very cool and rushing past me. Justin put a rock under my head, and I just laid there and looked up, and I was reminded of Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord, and day after day they proclaim that. In fact, it says that even though they don't have a voice, their message of God's glory is being passed around the whole world. And we need to be reminded that our God is that big, don't we? We need to encourage each other, and that's why it's important we take advantage of these opportunities to be together. And so I'm glad you're here today. Whether you're joining us in the room or online, grateful that you're here and we can encourage one another. Uh, if we haven't met yet, I'm Pat Jones. I'm the lead pastor here. Uh, pastor Robin's going to be speaking to us in just a few minutes from 1 Corinthians 12. You can get your Bible ready there um, if you have your Bible in front of you. Let me just remind you about a couple things, though. Our streaming options, if you want to share this ministry was with some other people, but maybe they aren't open to coming yet uh, and being in person. Uh, you can go to live.ehwc.org. That's the main platform where we're, our services are streamed. Or you can go to Facebook, uh, and on our Facebook page, it is there. We also are on uh, Roku and Apple TV. Um, we, are, we do have our archived uh, services and messages are on YouTube a little bit later. Uh, we're, we're focused on the live stream and Facebook mainly because we want to build community among those that may not be in our region, so they couldn't come in person, uh, but they can interact there online, and so that's why uh, we focus there. We'd love if you fill out a connection card. If you're in the room there in front of you in the pews, if you're not, uh, you can go uh, again to ehwc.org slash hello and fill out a connection card. It's a way that we stay in touch with one another, uh, up-to-date information, but also a way that we pray for one another. And you can put prayer requests in there, and those are prayed for weekly. Uh, also, if you have any questions about anything, you can utilize that hello function online, or you can stop by the Connection Center afterwards. We'd love to answer any questions that you have about anything here in the service. And again, you can check us out social media-wise during the week, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or our website, ehwc.org. Many ways to give as well. Uh, in the room, you have the boxes that are by the doors, uh, each of the doors. Um, and if you're online, you can text to give, you can do online giving, you can just use your bank uh, sources, bill pay or whatever to share as God leads you in your giving options. 
I want to tell you about a couple other things, and then I want to lead us in prayer. This coming Friday night, we're having a special event. Our kids' ministry is having a special family fun night that's going to be focused on water. So the water side's going to be out there. There's going to be water balloons. There's going to be frozen treats. There's all kinds of things. If for some reason it's raining too much water out there, we're going to be inside. So it's going to be like a family game night. And so we encourage you to come 6.30 Friday night. Next weekend, if you have a, a young child that has not been dedicated uh, and would like to do that, we have a prerequisite class that needs to be taken, and so that class will be held at 1015 in between services in the meeting place. You can just check baby dedication on your connection card, and we'll know to anticipate your presence there. Uh, I, again, as we continue this series, um, this talking about good grace, how we can love well in a canceled culture. I want to lead us in prayer, and then Pastor Robin's going to be speaking out of 1 Corinthians 12. So will you join me in praying? You know, Father, as we begin, we just want to praise you for being such an awesome God. The heavens do declare your glory. I, I'm reminded that when John saw you, he fell down as if he were dead. Ezekiel, the same way. When he saw the glory of the Lord, he was like a dead man who was lifted up. I'm reminded of Isaiah, who saw your glory in the temple, and he felt the weight of his own sin when he saw your glory, and yet you reached down and you purged his lips and forgave him his sin, and you just said, I, I want to use you. Here, my Lord, send me, and, and you sent him as an instrument in your hand. And so today, we as a people are just in awe of you. Just take a few moments just to praise him for who he is. Just lift up your voice of praise to him. Now, Lord, even as we praise you, we are not unaware. We're vitally aware of the deep things that are upon the hearts of many people. I, I think of the families that either this past week found that a family member or a dear friend committed suicide. I think about a, a family that we care about, that we've ministered to through the years, found a 28-year-old son unresponsive and he passed away. I, I, I think about other circumstances where grief is heavy upon people or there are times where moves are taking place and and uh, children are going to a new place of employment or to school or something else, and, and there's a concern upon the hearts of parents. Or we, as, as, as people, are vitally aware of the challenges that are being faced in life by coworkers or neighbors, and we just long, with the love of Christ, to see them find peace in you and know you who are, is the only God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. With those kind of concerns upon our hearts, Lord, we turn to you. We have no ability to deal with all these things, but our eyes are on you. And I thank you that you are the God that not only sees and knows, but you also are the God that hears. And I pray that you'll hear the cries of all of our hearts today as we bring our concerns before you. And I just encourage you, take a moment to lift whatever concern is upon your heart to him. Just lift up your voice to him. Thank you, Lord, for hearing these things. And now, Holy Spirit, as we turn to your word, you are the one that guides us into all truth. I pray that you will touch your servant, Father, and use her as an instrument to speak your word, not her words, your words. I pray that you'll give us ears to hear, and I pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll make application in our own hearts and minds about the truth that we're going to hear from your word now. So we offer ourselves and anticipate what you're going to say, and we look forward to what you're going to do and release through all of that. It's in the name of Christ our Lord we praise you. Amen.
Good morning, church. When I see that video, I wonder who's on the other end of that text. Is it his wife with maybe a young baby at home and they don't have a car and she's texting saying, I'll pray for you because she can't get there? Or is it a friend who's playing video games and doesn't want to leave those video games saying, I'll pray for you? One's okay and one's maybe not so okay. I'm Pastor Robin. and I oversee our missions department and I oversee um, the Kava Cafe. And I just want to celebrate. We have our Immeasurably More campaign and we have an update that we are over $271,000. And so congratulations and we thank you for participating in the campaign and we know that as this keeps going that we should be right on mark to pay off our debt and then have 37,000 uh, a month to be able to spread the gospel in many other ways and so awesome awesome deal is that well I am going to ask the worship team to come out before I read our passage for today they're going to help me with an illustration as we read the passage it's kind of a long passage so bear with me um, we're going to read 1st Corinthians 12 12 to 31 today just as the body though many parts but not but all its many parts form one body so it is with Christ. We are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. We, and we are all where God's given us the spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many parts. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be that reason to stop being part of the body, and if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would be not for that reason to stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wants them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, given greater honor to its parts that lack, giving greater honor to the parts that lacks it, so that we should have no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of all different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. So we have our worship team here that demonstrated how important the body of Christ is in each part. Paul was describing the church in relationship to the body of Christ. And as the church has many parts, so do the body have many parts. And all of the parts were important. They were all needed. They're all necessary. None is greater than the other part. They're all valuable. There is several differences in each part of the body. As you can see, there are different people standing up here, right? But there's one thing that is common for all of us. And that is what the yarn represents. It's the Holy Spirit that is weaved through the entire body that keeps the body together. One church, one body with many parts. 
Thank you. Have fun detangling, or maybe you can just scoot off all together that way. <laughs> So just as I read in verse 14, it says, The body of Christ is, made up of one, is not made up of one part, but of many parts. When we align our faith system to Jesus Christ, we decide that we're going to believe everything he stands for, and we become part of a bigger picture. If you look around here, there's no two people in this room alike. Some are young, some are older, some are male, some are female, some are teens, some are babies, some are married, some are single. And there's a variety of backgrounds also, a variety of careers, a variety of educations and talents, income levels, giftedness in, the tr in, the, in this room. That also includes those that are online as part of this variety and diversity. And as diverse as we are, there's one thing that we have in common. We all have the same spirit of Christ weaved through us. Paul is emphasizing that we have been baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ's body, which he calls the church. The Holy Spirit creates unity in all of our diversity. The Holy Spirit creates unity in all of our diversity. Did you know that you are alive specifically for now? In verse 18, it says, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as they wanted them to be. God had predetermined that it was necessary for you to be living at this time exactly where you are. Why? Because you have a specific part to play in his church right now. He knows what you are capable of, and he has you here for that reason. Just as he had Paul when Paul was living for that reason. This last year of anything, we have learned that we need each other. Our spirits crave to be together. Some of us needed help, and some of us were able to help. And that's because of God's grace and the gifts that he puts into each one of us that creates the desire to help each other. Paul continued to talk about how we should look at each other's gifts. Let me read it in verse 23 and 24. It says, and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat with special modesty. While our presentable parts needs no special treatment. But God has put the body together, together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it. Let me kind of unpack that for you. Let me give you an example. There are two types of people. There are people out there that get all of their energy being around other people. They're, those are our leaders and our teachers. Those are the people that like to be up front and in charge. They want to be making the decisions. Often, they are looked at more highly and regarded that they have greater gifts than others. And then there's the second group of people. And those are the people that it takes all of the energy out of them when they're around people. Those are the people that like to be behind the scenes. They say, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Don't just put me, just don't put me up front and don't put me in charge. Often, they are looked at as being weaker than the others, less important. I'll give you a, an example, a prime example is the Kava Cafe. In the front, we have people serving the coffee and the muffins and taking your money, and they are people that like to talk, like to be friendly, like to be serving in front of people. And then in the back, we have those that are behind the scenes, and they make your Belgian waffles and your cinnamon rolls and your breakfast sandwiches, and they're more concerned about presentation and making your meal taste delicious. One is not more important than the other. Both are important, both are necessary, one is not better than the other. The cafe works efficiently and effectively because everybody's doing their part. 
It's just one cafe, but it has many moving parts that keeps that cafe going. And that's how the church functions, one body, many moving parts. Basically, Paul is telling us, treat everybody's gifts, including your own, as they are valuable to God. Now, the Corinthian church was filled with division and disorder due to the culture and the worldview in society that was creeping into the church. They were divided because of the way they viewed each other. In verse 15 or verse 25, Paul is telling the Corinthian church, there should be no division in the body, but that each part should be having equal concern for each other. Some people thought their gifts were better than others, symbols of divine power. Um, others thought that they were more spiritual. These attitudes caused jealousy and division among the people in the church. It made some feel less worthy and less valuable. God's good grace was upon them, but they were turning what was good into self-serving and self-gratification. So there's a couple of lessons that we can learn from this church. There are two errors we can fall into that turn good grace into bad grace. The first one would be their extremes. So the first one would be being so proud of your abilities and taking more and more on, feeling like you need to be in control and in charge and nobody can do it as well as you can do it. I know for myself, when I was an early Christian, I kept getting asked to do different things. Before I know it, at the end of a week, I was um, responsible for 23 different things. You can't do that and do them all well. And so Paul is saying, don't be too proud of your abilities. We each have abilities. Don't exaggerate them of what you're able to do. And then the other extreme would be people that think, I have nothing to offer. I have no value. I am not worthy. I can't do anything. And that's also a faulty thought because even though they're trying to be re humble regarding their abilities, they have value. They are worthy. And there's everybody has a place to fall. Paul is teaching us that there is no superior gifts. Everybody, everybody's contribution is important no matter how insignificant it may seem. He tells us to be satisfied with the gifts that God has given us and don't envy others. We are to use our gifts to willingly serve God. Whether you think you have a lot to offer or a little to offer, whether you think you're strong in your faith or weak in your faith, whether you think you're valuable or not, there is a place for everybody to serve God and to glorify him with the gifts and the talents that he has put in each one of our DNAs. Not only are we to serve God, but we as a body of Christ are to share life together. Verse 26 says, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Pastor Pat prayed today for many people that were having difficulties in their life. They were suffering. We come alongside of them. We share in that suffering. But on the flip side, when somebody's rejoicing, like Sean said, his father's retirement, or maybe at a wedding or a baptism or baby dedication, we rejoice also with those that are rejoicing. Now, I want to zoom out a little bit because I've been kind of talking narrowly about the church, the body of Christ here at the church. But Paul stated in verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you has a part of it. Let's look at the body of Christ as a whole. Eastern Hills Church is just a tiny piece of the body of Christ. Think about it. I know that in our seven-mile radius, there's 97 different churches, and it's estimated that there's 380,000 churches in the United States. Statistics say 
205 million people uh, claim to be Christian in the United States. But that's even still a small amount of the body of Christ, God's church. In 2020, there was a survey that says 2.4 billion people who who adhere to Christianity, there's 2.4 billion people that adhere to Christianity all over this planet. 2.4 billion people worship Jesus every Sunday. That is 31% of our population. It's almost a third of all the people living and I know our mission teams have gone to serve with some of the people in foreign lands. And I can tell you, they are where they are supposed to be. God has placed them where they're supposed to be for this time now. And they are using their gifts to reach people for Jesus Christ. We're not alone. We're part of a much larger body of Christ a larger body of people. Just ponder this for a moment. When you take communion, we are united with 2.4 billion people of all races, all colors, all creeds, listening to the words that say, this is my body given for you. Good grace doesn't divide, it unifies. God's good grace invites us into his church and then unleashes us to be transformed and to help others be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, how does that happen? When the church, you and I, and 2.4 billion people use their unique gifts that God has placed in their DNA to spread the gospel message of salvation to two-thirds of the population. Seventy percent of this population on this planet do not adhere to Christianity. That's a big task to reach all of those people, and that's why Jesus needs everyone to do its part. Everyone is needed, and everyone is valuable. Now remember, the church is not a building. It's a body a body of people working together to build up the church. Paul identified some gifts in this passage, but that's not an exhaustive list. There are several places in Scripture that talks about gifts. The point is God has given us gifts to use them to glorify him. There are so many people here at Eastern Hills that I know are using their gifts, that, that are part of this body of Christ. You may be part of the worship team or the security team, or maybe you're helping in children's ministry or a barista at the cafe. You could be leading a Bible study or helping in the office or sending cards to somebody that's sick. There are several places available to pursue your spiritual gifts in this body of Christ. Why is it important? Why is it even important that we use our gifts? We are living in a culture that cancels what they don't like and replaces it what feels good at the time. I came across an article in the Washington Times just this past July, and the title drew my attention in. The title said, America's New Religion, Fake Christianity. The article was talking about moralistic, therapeutic deism. It's a world view that has quickly gained prominence in America. And it's not really biblical, it's not really Christian, and it's not even a religion. But based on a survey done by George Barna's research group this February, they said that moralistic Therapeutic deism is the most popular worldview in the United States today. So I did some research on MTD. Let's break it down. Goes by its name, moralism. What is moralism? It's living by a personal code of conduct. 
doing the right thing based on your own value system. The therapeutic piece, the pr primary value in life is that I feel good about myself. The emphasis is on what feels good to me. God is here to meet my needs only when I need him. I'm not here to follow him and obey him. Now, the deism part in moral, uh, moralistic therapeutic deism would state that God exists, that he's out there somewhere in the universe who I can call on to help me like a magical genie. Versus what we believe that God is present with us at all times and in all places and God meets our needs according to his plan because he knows what is best for us. The key points of moral therapeutic deism lends to be fake Christianity. Moral therapeutic deism focuses on serving our own needs, our own self-satisfaction, our own gratification, canceling out the core beliefs of what it means to be a fowler of Jesus Christ. It's not much different than what the Corinthians church worldview that Paul was addressing in our readings today. As Bible-believing Christians, how do we counteract this and other fake world, um, worldviews and extend grace at the same time? God has given each one of us spiritual gifts, not for our own self-advancement, but to serve God and to enhance the spiritual growth of the body of believers. As culture attempts to cancel history, Christ has proven the test of time. The body of Christ still exists over the course of time because Christians have used their spiritual gifts over the course of time to share the good news and good grace with others. Ultimately, God is in control, but he gives us the honor to participate in his plan. The only item that's canceled in Christianity is the debt of our sin penalty. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and nobody comes, through, comes to the Father except through me. So why have we been talking for this whole sermon series about good grace, and why today are we talking about spiritual gifts that God has given us? It's because each one of us has a role to play in the plan that God has for this world. When we work together, we serve his church better. And when we serve his church better, we can reach more people for Jesus Christ. I'd like you to watch a video of a church members that were working together in unity and look at the difference that they've made for one young couple. Uh, my mum was into, like, she was into witchcraft and she was into kind of like spiritual, psychic, medium stuff. They'd try and contact like dead spirits and try and teach you how to like channel it. That was like the only real idea of church or any kind of religious upbringing that I had. I was born into a Catholic household as the second oldest of six kids. I got into Satanism when I was about 15. Started off just kind of looking into it because I was curious, and then it became a fascination of mine, and then just as I kind of grew up in it, it just became a way of life for me. When I finally found people that, that I felt like I fit in with, it was groups of people that were doing drugs and drinking. Satan was my friend, like he was my best friend growing up. I didn't. Like, I didn't have a dad growing up. So I went online to try to find some friends. Elizabeth popped up into my chat room. He became my best friend, and we just talked literally every day after that. Well, I found out while we were still talking online um, that Dan was a Satanist. And, I mean, I didn't have any beliefs at that time, so it never bothered me. So we got married really fast. And it was literally like right after we got married, things started to get really bad. We got really obsessed with evil for a while. 
It was honestly the only time that we got along. It just got from bad to worse to the point where we just hated each other. We would wake up every day and just look at each other with disgust that we were married. And it was bad, like I wanted out. One day she came home with like a like a flyer for for the Easter service and was like, we're going to this. And I was like, no, we're not. You can go, but I'm, I, I'm not going to church. It's not happening. The morning did not start off good. Um, we were struggling to get the kids ready. My idea of American church people was like Bible bashers and like just crazy preachers. There was this band on stage playing. The next song started and it was We Believe. In that moment, the Holy Spirit just completely took me over. I knew that everything that I had searched for my entire life, that this was it. And that's when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And I told her that if this was something that she was seriously gonna be a part of from now on, then I, I'm, I'm divorcing her. Our relationship actually got quite a bit worse after that. And so, Dan and I made a deal. We had agreed that he would come to church with me for an entire series. And at the end, he wanted to meet up with one of the pastors um, to talk about why it was wrong, why he didn't believe it, why it wasn't true. It was during that service that I, I gave my life to Christ. It's been just over two years now. Elizabeth works at the church now. I'm also pursuing ministry. The full life that Jesus has given me is something I want everyone to experience. God's grace in my life has just been incredible. And it's something that I would never deserve, something that I would never expect, but it's just been amazing. Wasn't that an incredible story of redemption? Praise God, right? Praise God for that. It is because that is the result of the body of Christ using their unique spiritual gifts for the advancement of the church. Somebody sent them a flyer. There was greeters at the door. The worship team was playing. There were people watching their children. The body of Christ was working together so that that couple could have a redemption story. Are you using your gifts for the advancement of the church? What's your redemption story? Have you told it to somebody lately? If you don't have a redemption story or know what I'm talking about, head back to the hospitality room at the end of the service. There's some pastors there that would be happy to explain that. Or if you're online, go to ehwc.org slash my moment. Jesus needs you and I to continue the work that he has started. He said, you will do greater things than me. Well, how can we do greater things than him? When we do our part as the body of Christ, 70% of the population, two-thirds of the world, need to hear about the salvation message of Jesus Christ and have their redemption story. Let's look for opportunities. It's important that we continue always to grow in our faith, to have a relationship with Jesus every day. And we've been talking about our spiritual gifts. It's important that we serve the body of Christ and find the place that we can use our unique gifts. And we need to help dispel fake Christianity and invite others to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I started the sermon by asking the question, what is it in our DNA that helps us want to help others? And the answer, it's the Holy Spirit who fills us with good grace and good gifts to help others. Our worship team is here, and we're going to continue our worship.
just want to sit here at your feet Caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Yeah. I'm caught up in your presence. sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you nothing else nothing else Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do.
and in your feet caught up in this holy moment and I never want to leave oh I'm not here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me All summer long, you've been seeing videos of all the fun activities that have been going on in this church. Those things don't just happen. It's because people participated by using their gifts to plan and organize them. There is a spot in this church for everybody to be able to plug in. There is a place for everybody, no matter if it's here, near, far or in hard places around the world. I'm excited about this next announcement because it has to do with what we've been talking about. On August 29th, we are having a special worship service to celebrate those that have been serving. And it's going to be at 10 o'clock, just one service, 10 o'clock, August 29th. And we'll be celebrating those that have found a spot to serve, but you might be saying, I have something to offer. I want to plug in. Well, that's the place that you can plug in. We can help you find a place to plug in with the special gifts that God has given you. So in order to attend, we're having a special training afterwards, after the 10 o'clock service. And in order to attend that training, you would go to ehwc.org slash training and sign up. There will be children's ministry happening so parents can also participate. August 29th, 10 o'clock, one service, celebrating what you have done and a training to follow. I also want to let you know that the American Red Cross keeps telling us that there is an urgent, urgent need for blood. We are having a blood drive here on August 23rd from 9 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon. We have about 14 spots left on that blood drive, and we would love for you to fill them up. So if you can donate blood on August 23rd from 9 until 2, go to the American Red Cross website. You have to register there on their website. Just look for Eastern Hills Wesleyan Church, and that's, um, it'll pop up, and you'll be able to register. But I want you to have a great week, and as you leave today... Ponder the gifts that God has given you, how you're using him to glorify, using them to glorify him, and go be the church. To God be the glory. Amen.